Hello, this is Dr. Hina Asil, and this is about human reproductive system. So let us take a look at what we're required to know about this. So first of all, you should know the parts of the female reproductive system. Please note that the female reproductive system is made up of two ovaries. Each ovary produces eggs and produces the female hormones. Now, attached to the ovaries, there are two oviducts, and the oviduct is where fertilization happens. So, when the ovary releases an egg, the egg stands in the oviduct for a day or two. If it is fertilized, then an embryo starts to grow into a fetus. If not, the egg dies and is released out of the body. Now, if the egg is fertilized, it goes down the oviduct into the uterus and attaches itself to uterus lining. So the uterus lining is where implantation happens. That is where the growing fetus attaches itself to the uterus lining in order to obtain nutrients from the mother. The cervix is the opening of the uterus and this is where sperms are deposited for fertilization of the egg. If we look at the male reproductive system, the male reproductive system is made up of two testes. The uh, function of the testes is to produce sperm and the male hormone. Now, the uh, testes produces the sperms, the sperms goes into the epididymis. This is where the sperms are stored. And then when they're ready to be released out of the body, they go out through the sperm duct and then through the urethra. Okay. And notice that for the male reproductive system, the urethra is the passage for both sperms and urine. Now, if we compare between the male and female gametes or the male and female cells, the male cell is the sperm and this has a long tail to allow it to move because this has to be mobile. The male uh, sperm goes in through the cervix and then it needs to uh, move up to the oviduct. So it needs a tail to help in movement. It has mitochondria to give it energy. Mitochondria is the part of the cells that make respiration to release energy. It also has a nucleus in the head part. It has a nucleus that has the genetic material of the male parent. It also, at the beginning of the head, there is what we call an acrosome that releases enzymes that allows it to go through the egg. Now, when it fertilizes the egg, it has to go through the outer jelly coat. And then inside the egg, there is a lot of cytoplasm and it has a nucleus, the female nucleus, which carries the um, genetic material from the female parent. So what happens? The first thing that happens is an egg is released from the ovary. That happens on what we call day 14. So on day 14 of a certain menstrual cycle, the egg is released from the ovary and that is called ovulation. Now the egg travels from the ovary through the oviduct to the uterus. If the egg is not fertilized in the oviduct, then the female hormones drop and the inner lining of the uterus begins to break down and that is what we call menstruation. So remember that when the egg is not fertilized in the oviduct, the egg dies and the uterus lining breaks down and this process is called menstruation. So this is given day one of the menstrual cycle. Menstruation happens for about five to seven days. After that, the body is ready for a new egg. So the uterus lining starts to become thicker again. By day 14, again, another egg is released and the cycle 
continuous. So if the egg is fertilized, the embryo forms and implants in the uterus lining and no menstruation occurs. But if the egg is not fertilized, then the uterus lining breaks down and we start a new menstrual cycle. So the first thing that happens after ovulation, the egg comes out into the oviduct, then we have fertilization. Fertilization is the fusion of male and female nucleus to form a zygote. So the egg we said is surrounded by a jelly coat. Once one of the sperms penetrates through the jelly coat and we said the sperm has something called acrosome that releases enzymes that helps it to go through the jelly coat. Now once one of the sperms has penetrated through jelly coat, the jelly coat close up, closes up and no more sperms are allowed to enter and the nucleus of the sperm fuses with the nucleus of the egg to form a zygote that is called fertilization. So once fertilization happens, then this fertilized egg becomes what we call embryo. And this goes down the oviduct into the uterus lining. The uterus lining is where the embryo attaches to the mother's body. And this attachment between the fetus and the mother's uterus lining, this is called a placenta. So the placenta has blood vessels of the fetus coming very near to blood vessels of the mother so that substances can diffuse in and out. What is the function of the placenta? What are the things that can diffuse from mother to fetus? So from mother to fetus, we need to glucose, amino acids, minerals to go from the mother. So we also need uh, oxygen to diffuse from the mother's blood to the fetus blood. So the mother provides the fetus with glucose, amino acids, minerals, and oxygen for respiration. Now the placenta also removes wastes from the fetus. So what are the wastes coming from the fetus? These would be the carbon dioxide from respiration and the urea, these will diffuse from the fetus blood to the mother's blood. Then, what is the function of the umbilical cord? Remember that the umbilical cord is the tube attaching the fetus to the placenta. So this is the tube that carries blood from fetus to placenta and back. It has blood vessels. Um, that carry the blood to and from the fetus. A amniotic sac around the fetus secretes amniotic fluid. Now, what is the function of the amniotic fluid? The amniotic fluid protects the fetus from shock. So this is the liquid around the fetus that protects it from shock. Now, once the fetus is ready or the baby is ready to be born, the cervix dilates the baby is expelled out of the body and then the placenta is also expelled out of the body. But while the fetus is growing, the mother has to be careful with uh, keeping the fetus healthy. So what kind of diet should the mother have? Remember that the mother needs a lot of proteins for new cells and growth of the fetus. Uh, she needs carbohydrates to provide glucose for respiration to release energy. Uh, she needs vitamins for he healthy growth like vitamin C and vitamin D. She also needs minerals such as iron to make hemoglobin for red blood cells and calcium for strong bones and teeth. She also needs to avoid smoking. Remember that smoking cigarettes, this involves carbon monoxide and nicotine. Carbon monoxide and nicotine would diffuse from the mother's blood to the blood of the fetus. Remember that carbon monoxide attaches to hemoglobin in the red blood cells. So it reduces the amount of oxygen transported by red blood cells, which is needed for respiration. If this happens and goes to the baby's blood, this results in babies that are born smaller than usual. 
nicotine also from the cigarette smoke is addictive and it increases the heart rate of the fetus so when it goes it damages blood uh, cells and it increases the heart rate of the fetus so uh, mothers that uh, smoke during pregnancy are more likely to have a miscarriage in which the baby dies before it is born another thing that the mother should avoid is drugs and alcohol all of these diffuse to the fetus blood and will affect its development remember these things affect the development of the brain cells so this is very dangerous for the fetus also caffeine in coffee and cola drinks are also addictive and may be harmful to the fetus and that's the end of human reproduction for now um, thank you for listening please share the video